honestly, wrap is crap. What do we need to know about fiberglass panels? That is quality fiberglass. But does it fit, is the question. V10, yummy! Good morning, princes and princesses. I'm Dave, reporting for the world famous Monkey London channel, and we are here at SMV today. So what have I got interesting for you today, boys and girls? Well, we have got in... Yes, Disco Dave's V10. Look at that, that is a big, steaming 500 brake V10 engine in an E46. Yes, this is quite a quick car. So our job today is to do some Matty Evans fiberglass wings and we'll be doing our Matty Evans front bumper as well, much the same as on my car you can see the, the lovely, lovely fitting Matty Evans front bumper. Mmm, very nice. A Matty Evans wing. The bit people struggle with is cutting out these vents cleanly. So our job is to, obviously it's got no fixing holes either. We've got to put the fixing holes in that make it all align nicely. Basically we've got to cut those vents out, working through multiple stages to get them nice and tidy. In this instance, because Disco's car is not painted, it's just wrapped, we will probably just paint the fiberglass to grey or a satin black finish. We don't do wrap. Honestly, wrap is crap. Many people have been asking about the E28. We're not moving very quickly on it because we were looking for a door which we've now found. Nasty rust. So the only actual cure for rust is to do a choppy. These are the wings which have been media blasted. They are in X primer ready for work to continue with them. We've also had blasted um, the air boxes and the brackets, some brackets for the engine bay. On this sill, there's a couple of holes in this sill, not major major, so we're going to do a choppy choppy on those as well, cut them out. On the front wings and the rear arches, they've got to be rolled and the plastic kit has got to be trimmed back slightly because this car normally has a nice set of split rims on it that are at the moment being refurbed with larger barrels put on so they're going to be 17 inch a little bit more sexy on the fitment. He's also bought a complete exhaust system which will be fitted to the car. Billy's car is now getting very close to uh, getting some paint on it. Those are actually carbon fiber doors and they are so, so light. We found a couple of issues with them. One is that they need the, the hinges opening a little bit more because the alignment's just a touch close for my satisfaction. I think by the time it's got paint on it, it might just about uh, click the quarter panel. So we're gonna readjust those. Billy has been waiting a long time to see this completed. He's about 18 months into the, into the build of this car. Not that it takes 18 months to build a car like this it's just sometimes it's really really hard especially with motorsport performance and tuning companies to get them to actually do anything to a time scale the car's actually only been with us for about four weeks normally I've had that turn around within two weeks and back to him but he doesn't actually need it at the moment because no bloody tracks are open come on Boris sort it out so I have done a little fit on this wing, this side. I'm now going to move on to the driver's side and I will uh, talk you through what we're doing. So firstly, we're just going to remove all the fixings, which are down here. They are inside, inside the arch here. There's one at the top, one at the bottom, one down there as well. Inside, that will drop this wing off. So what do we need to know about fiberglass panels? Well, one of the first things you need to know about fiberglass panels is normally they they don't fit edges like this lack of holes for fixing the the panel to the car so the first point that you have to address really is removing the excess fiberglass that hasn't been trimmed back enough and leave the parts in place that you need to fix it so just mark it up with a biro a pen a sharpie whatever whatever you've got to hand and then trim those parts out gradually To trim those out using an air saw. These are basically your best friend uh, with fiberglass drill, air saw, and a uh, little Dremel tool. So that is the initial cut done, and uh, we're going to offer that up to the car now and see Wagwan. 
Okay, sweet. So that is actually uh, lining up quite nicely with the bottom of the wing. So I'm now going to proceed with uh, making the holes on the top edge of the wing because with fiberglass it just takes a little bit of manipulating to uh, actually line up properly so we'll just mark the top holes and then we can flex and manipulate the, the wing to guide us for the rest of the holes. And the main thing I'm looking for at the moment is this gap here so I can get that gap correct and work out where roughly the wing should be. So we're going to drill a couple of these holes out now that I've marked up. That will give us a fixing point to hold the wing so I can then work on the, uh, the alignment of the holes for the back edge where it joins the door. So as I mentioned before, I am now going to uh, drop the wing on with a couple of bolts at the top, mark up these holes at the side. Pretty much lined up. A slightly large gap at the top of the pillar but unfortunately that is the nature of the beast with fiberglass we've got the lines correlating with the door and the moldings check line with the sill yes that's good bonnet gaps as fiberglass goes very tidy we're yet to align the lower part of the wing the next step is to do the fiberglass front bumper so i won't position those that is now starting to look pretty good and if you know anything about fiberglass especially race panels you'll know that is actually a very good fit uh, this right here that is the fiberglass racing front bumper and this is a, a matty evans race panel once again i'm going to show you now how good this is for a fiberglass bumper let's have a little close-up bear in mind this isn't painted that is just the gel coat so tidy around the edges it's just a really really good quality part it's exactly the same part i run on my m3 it's got the recess there for the splitter to go into and it can be supplied with all of the parts that you need, the split, uh, the tie bars, you know, absolutely everything to fit it up, even the canards. I actually went chose this product before Matty actually sponsored me just because it was such a good product. That is quality fiberglass. But does it fit is the question, so let's find out. That is the old bumper which was wrapped uh, and has had the wrap removed. BMW, they spent millions of pounds researching how to build their car and a lot of people when they mount fiberglass panels they think they know better and they do a some sort of crazy fixing system but what I try and do unless it's particularly heavy is use the original mounting system so what we are going to do is take this foam bracket here these corner sliders which is how the how the bumper a lines up and uh, b joins to the car with these socket joints here what we are going to do is we're going to put those on the car coat them with primer and windscreen bonder and then actually put the bumper into the place where it fits and leave it overnight to set in place and once it's set it will be joined with all of these fixing points that BMW designed as it should be just like a factory job. So I've basically just chucked that bumper over the cross member. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it and prop it in place, get the alignment so I can do the final holes in the corners of the wings and then I know everything's going to be nice and central on it. At the moment that is literally just hanging there. Okay, so that is looking fairly close. A couple of little tweaks to be made, which I will show you now. In this corner here, in order to bring that wing out to there, just got to drill the bracket in the right place. That'll edge that wing out to there and mean that we can get that hockey stick then into place there and close that gap up. Just that little movement there, that'll bring everything into place. On the other side, I'm going to have to make a little bracket to just extend you can see this is here so I can do the same with that but as you can see that is actually again quite a tidy fix right so to remove these corner brackets we've got these little plastic welded in bits here so we're just gonna melt those out cut through these bits of sealer here remove these couple of bolts pretty much the same for this there's the plastic welded bits we're gonna remove those and get all that out now. But the brackets are knocked up for the wings and fitted and that is now lining up nicely with the bumper corners so we're going to whip that bumper off and 
uh, mount the sliders which is removed from the old bumper. We are going to windscreen prime these areas where we need it to touch the brackets and we're going to windscreen prime the bumper foam and the back of the brackets and then basically bond it on if it's strong enough to hold a windscreen in strong enough to hold a bumper on windscreen bonder warming that up under the heat lamp basically to get it a li little bit more pliable easy to spread onto the onto the back of the bumper and the bits because it is very very thick and sticky get about an hour for that to go off i'm going to crack on and give that a go that is now uh, bonded and we've held it together temporarily with some mole grips but it seems good and solid so that has got they say an hour to go off for a windscreen but we will leave that overnight before we uh, before we move forwards with it so we've just gripped it down the corners while the bond goes off which is joining the, the factory brackets inside when it's actually set i normally drill the hangers uh, and just put a a bolt through the hanger as well just so it's sort of doubly secure once you start adding downforce to that then uh, you need the, the most secure fixing you can possibly get so yes that is effectively in place a few moments later here we are uh, it is now the morning and the bond has gone off on disco's bumper that is on no supports all the gaps looking pretty damn good to be honest nice and solid so that's actually on the sliders Ooh, yes very good i will be adding an extra fixing in there but fundamentally yes that is the front end all mounted up and completed so what he wants is the vents picking out in the wings those have got to be cut out and some sections in there and then the wings have got to be painted satin black ready for the wrap and that is ready to go to the wrap wrappers so we'll finish that off today right so uh colt sievers is jumping on the bm now and he has started cutting the holes out now the key to cutting the holes out he tells me is uh to cut them rough first and then work your way back to uh to that final final shape that you want because if you go in with something aggressive uh, and try and get to the final shape it's very easy to make a mistake so kind of start off like that uh, just roughly cut out with a die grinder the next stage is taking them back a little bit further with something less aggressive and then the final stage finishing them off with sandpaper to get that nice clean crisp finish that you can see there mm, many skills right so uh the inside of the fiberglass bumper that is now all sealed lovely and solid so that we actually try add that on and uh fold it off and that is perfectly solid as you can see it fits on with these pop-ons here me and colt sievers have just finished doing the wings uh, which took three hours each to get them to where we wanted them. I'll take you into the booth now and show you just before we paint them. So what is the key to getting the holes correct in the wings? Well, the key is you just can't brush it. Uh, you've got to go through the necessary stages. You've got to finish in it everything by hand meticulously. That is why it takes three hours to do them. There's no way you're going to rush it and get it the way it should look. You're only going to be compromised. So that is where we're at. So the next stage is we're going to prime them black. So we've got the build of high, high build primer, but we're adding a little bit of lacquer to the primer so that it has got some protection so that it's not porous. So that is what I'm going to do next. So the, uh, the primer is applied to the wings. Pretty much perfect for the wrappers if they just want to nib any bits and throw the chrome wrap over the top. Pretty tidy to be honest. We've 
Also had to do a little repair on the sill because that was crumpled also. That sill is it's just uh, got back to its original shape so it lines up nicely with the wing and the side skirts and then uh, we can put that back together. It should be done by the morning so I think it's uh, six o'clock. It's probably time for me to uh, move on to the next project. Morning all, it's day three. What have I got to do? On Matty's bumpers, he has this under tray section, the disco mobile, everything actually sits a little bit too low for that. So we've got to trim that off a little bit. Normally I would make a custom frame for that, but disco is a metal fabricator. So he will be doing that himself. We're going to trim that off, put the wings on, put the bumper on, give you a little show round. It's pretty much ready for him to collect and uh, finish the final bits of himself. So shortly that should be completed. So I'm going to go in with the uh, electric snap-on trim trimmer and just chop that off. Nice and neat, yeah. A bit of Rolf Harris, Ooh, that's inappropriate. So as you can see, it is fairly straightforward to fit up, no more complicated than a normal M3 and is all now a couple of little bits and bobs just to finish off uh, and then it's ready to go.